favorite thing about this show, like, I don't know if you noticed, it's been kind of a theme to the show, a little bit of a theme. It's uh, been, you know, like, like uh, gender queer, uh, non-binary, uh, just regular queer uh, women on the show, and then Tristan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just black. That's <laughs> 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 You're drinking Kool-Aid to start your day? <laughs> That's my thing. I'm, I'm, I'm African sexual. That's, a, that's how I identify. Just a black guy that fucks periodically. <laughs> and there will still be the guys, the homophobic guys, who are like, No, Brad, no! You put a finger in your butt, that makes you gay. That makes you gay. Really? Do you really think that? You think something can just make you gay? Just out of nowhere, just make you gay? Like there's ever been a situation where a man's been having sex with a woman like, I love pussy. <laughs> and cock, the hills are alive. Yeah, I don't know. I did do one smart thing. I did do one kind of like investment thing. I bought a house. That's something, right guys? Thank you. It's, it's in the shitty neighborhood I grew up in, though. I grew up in Southeast Baltimore, Greek town. I grew up in uh, season two of The Wire, to tell you, basically. <laughs> Pretty easy to get a house there, I'm not gonna lie to you. To give you an idea, when we moved in, one of our neighbors warned us that the other neighbor was gay. So, <laughs> you get a little idea what the property values are like over there, right? And the way he did it was hilarious, too, because he was like, listen, good guy and everything, but watch out. It's like, for what? What am I watching out for? What is this man, some kind of gay raccoon? You know what I mean? Like, hey, buddy, you're gonna wanna lock your dicks up overnight, okay? Cover them, chain them up, bring them indoors. This man's got a real nose for a penis, all right? He will get to a cock, I promise you that. Got me a couple times, stay safe out there. <laughs> I'll hit on a girl. And by the way, I figured out I was bi because I was obsessed with Hanson. I was like, are they boys? Are they girls? What is that? I want that. <laughs> right? Mm -ba -ba -dim -ba -dim. I love it. I love, I love that the, like, they wrote that down and were like, this is the song. Mm -ba -ba -boom -ba -ba, you know? So I'll hit on a girl. I'll be like, hey, what's up? I'm Jade. And they're like, wow, if I was a stripper, that would be the name I use. Yeah. <laughs> and look, I love fucking strippers, OK? Not fucking strippers. I love. I like both. Yeah, I like strippers and I like fucking strippers. I'm like, you mean to tell me if you're showing your body parts for a dollar at a time, you'd use the one name my parents chose out of all the names? It's not a compliment. I'm like, what's your name? Ashley. Oh, that would be my name if I was a bitch. That's crazy. It's the circle of cons. I'm sorry, I knew three Ashleys and they were all cons. So survey says, bing, bing, bing. Let me just tee up. I'm okay with trans people. I, shut up. I, <laughs> one of my moms, one of my moms, she goes to the doctor the other day. She's fucking, she's like a CrossFit junkie. You know, she's fucking stacked. Her legs look like pig's legs from the back. You know what I mean? In a good way, in a good way. Just hawks, ham hawks, right? And I told her I was on Prozac. And she was like, I want to be on Prozac. Do your parents do that where the second you tell them you have a drug? Like, I'm like, I want a microdose. And I want a microdose. I'm like, what are you, you can't, you're going to be in your kitchen. Like, Alexa, turn off my skin. Stop. <laughs> anyway, so she goes to the doctor and she's like, I want Prozac. I'm depressed. And the doctor's like, I think you're depressed because you're trans. You guys, she threw a stool. She <laughs> threw a stool and was chanting in the doctor. I love my titties and I'm a, I'm a girl, okay? I'm a little girl. I love my titties. I mean, it was crazy. So that's where I come from. All of the women in our family, we are women, right? So, I mean, I'm a woman, it's hard. So when I'm, you know, there's women, right? Look at you, look at you. And then I'm a woman, but I'm kind of in the outside rubber band. I'm holding it open, it hurts. It's cutting in a little bit, I got it. But when one of my like non-binary friends jumps out, I'm like, no, 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 bitch with the mustache, get the fuck back in here. So one of my friends is becoming a man. And he said that he feels like he was a man trapped inside of a woman's body. And I was like, buddy, that's the best part of being a woman. That's the only good part of being a woman. You think when I spit my gum out and it goes 10 feet into the trash, you think I'm not immediately like, I got a big old hog, dude, obviously. 
I'm like, are you trans or did you just parallel park real smooth a couple times? Let's be honest. I'm fine with it. I'm fine with it. I just, there are things, you know, like, I think anybody should get a new vagina. Get a vagina, but you should have to take a couple of my ovarian cysts. That's how I feel. <laughs> so. I support transgender people because, my God, if you're born one sex, you live for a while as that sex, and you're like, you know what? No, this is not who I'm supposed to be. And you want to go through that entire process to change. You want to go through the hormone therapies, have the plastic surgeries, write that really awkward email to your family. Hey, I'm not going to have a dick anymore. Merry Christmas. <laughs> like, that's that's got to be tough, and I support you, especially if you're a dude and you become a woman. If you're a dude and you become a woman, they take it, okay? They take it, and once it's gone, it... It's gone. It's gone. It's not like tattoos. Or like Tattoos are permanent. Tattoos are not permanent. You can laser it off, cover it up. Oh, you can do all these different sorts of things your tattoos. You can't do that. Once that's gone, it's gone. There's no such thing as a re Okay, like, that's not happening. <laughs> so I'm not against transgender people. No. I'm against all the people that ever since the Caitlyn Jenner thing, now they're hopping on this I identify as bandwagon. Where that's all you have to say is I identify as, and then whatever you say after that, we immediately have to treat you as such, no questions asked. So you'd be like, I identify as a black person, we have to treat you like a black person. I identify as a hamster, we gotta get you a little ball, a water bottle, like that's it. It's like fine, as long as we all get to do this, ladies, I identify as Channing Tatum, suck my dick. Okay? <laughs> How about that? What, I can be Magic Mike? I can be Magic Mike, check that shit out right there, yeah. That's Magic Mike right there. I am Magic Mike X, X, S. R. Kelly pissed on his victim. <laughs> I know, it was rough. But I mean, again, I can't even judge R. Kelly. First of all, we don't know if these allegations are true or not, and even if they are true, if you want to know how I feel about it honestly, if a man cannot pee on his fans, I don't want to be in show business anymore because, well, that's why I got in the game, baby. I got dreams, too. You guys are confusing the issue. Why you guys are busy worrying about if R. Kelly even peed on this girl or not, you're not asking yourself the real question that America needs to decide once and for all. And that question is, how old is 15 really? No, oh, that's a good question. That's a good question. I'm not saying that a person is as smart as they're gonna be at 15. That's not what I'm saying, man. But I am saying 15 to me is old enough to decide whether or not you want to be pissed on. I mean, that's me. If you can't make a decision like that by the time you're 15, then just give up, motherfucker, because life is way harder than that. I make tougher decisions all the time. If you don't want to get pissed on, just get the fuck out of the way. It's not even a decision. If I stop peeing on the front row, they're not gonna have to calculate and think, oh, how do I feel about this? Am I okay with it? They just move. <laughs> you can do that at 15. I, I could have. I've been 15. When I was 15, I was doing stand up in nightclubs. I smoked reefer from time to time. Friends were selling crack. I was trying to finger fuck people. I knew what was happening around me <laughs> to some degree. Getting pissed on was the least of my worries at 15. <laughs> Trust me. It's a complicated country. People get angry. They don't. Everybody hates gay people. I never understood anger towards gay people because a person being gay doesn't affect your life. So it's weird to me that people just like they're in their homes going, "Oh, people are gay." <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> what do you care? I can understand hating gay people if, say, like you're mowing your lawn and two guys are blowing each other right on the grass. And you're like, "Oh, I gotta cut around you faggots every Sunday. I'm sick of this shit." <laughs> Or say you're eating your breakfast in the morning and you're about to put your spoon in the cereal bowl and two guys touch dicks right in front of you. Hey, come on! I gotta get to work. I don't have time to dodge your dicks with my spoon. Fucking homos, get out of my kitchen. No. Uh, I'm engaged to a woman. I'm engaged to a woman. Thanks. Oh, cool. <laughs> Thank you. What a fun thing to clap for. It's interesting because I still come from a time, I'm not that old, but I come from a time where it's pretty scary to come out, right? Yeah. You could get disowned by your family, could get physically hurt, right? So now I'll talk about it on stage and it's still a little scary for me, especially when I perform in more rural, conservative places. 
<laughs> Sometimes, though, I will mention it in one of those places, and they will also clap. And I'm like, really? And they're like, yeah, we're part of the alphabet mafia. Really? <laughs> like this room full of camo, really? <laughs> and some guys, we love gay rights as long as you're both white. And I'm like, fuck, <laughs> close. <laughs> Almost got me. I, uh, <laughs> I'm bisexual, uh, have been, oh cool, <laughs> less applause, I understand. Uh, <laughs> have been forever, I know there's a lot of options now, but if you don't know what bisexual means, that just means I'm attracted to both men and attention, so there's that. Uh, I'm gonna marry a lady. <laughs> I've been out since I was 14, and uh, I've been doing stand-up for over a decade. Never once have I been asked to do a pride show or an LGBTQ plus showcase or anything. I didn't know I would have to prove I was gay enough to do one of these shows. I'm like, I think I can do your pride show. And they're like, oh really? How gay are you? I'm like, I'm gonna marry a woman. They're like, that seems like something a straight guy would do. I was having this conversation with my gay friends, right? I was talking about the summer, and I was complaining. And they're like, what do you mean? You don't have sex? We're having sex all the time. But that's not fair, you guys. A gay guy making fun of a straight guy for not having enough sex is like a Harlem Globetrotter making fun of an NBA player for not scoring enough points, you know? <laughs> it's like, come on, man. No one plays defense in your league, right? <laughs> a lot of... A lot of showmanship, yeah, a lot of confetti. But not a lot of fundamentals is all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, I don't know though, I'm 32, you know? Maybe it's time I started doing some gay shit, you know? <laughs> Looks like fun, you know? Like no one's ever come in my mouth, but I love an over easy egg. <laughs> How different could it really be? Be honest with yourselves right now. It's probably pretty close. <laughs> Throw a little Tabasco on the guy's cock, you know what I mean? Take me to brunch, big dog. <laughs> There's some pissed off dudes in the crowd right now. Hard scramble from now on. I will not have gay eggs. Here's the thing in life. It's not bad to be attracted to kids. The thing in life is you just can't act on your shit. You can be attracted to whatever you want. <laughs> you got no control of any of this shit. It's like liking ice cream or liking the color red. You got no control. You just gotta push that shit down. <laughs> whatever your shit is. We all got something. Push it down. <laughs> we live in a society now always telling people, come out the closet, be you. No! <laughs> Some people have nice closets. <laughs> Some people have air condition and TVs in their closet. Push it down. There's gay men in here right now with women. Right now. That's what you want to do? That's, hey, do you push it down? No. Just push it down. Lesbians with men. There's a couple in here. <laughs> and guys like, she don't like me. No, she don't want you. <laughs> you think she just mad at you. No, she don't want you. Push it down. Just push your shit down. Push it down. That's it. You gotta push your shit down. Everybody, everybody got their thing? Fucks them up. Me, porno. Pornos like that. Yeah. <laughs> Porno, been trying to kick it for years. Because racially, I'm an Indian man. Culturally, there's things that happen culturally. If you were not raised in that part of the world, you will find it unacceptable. Like in India, grown-ass men, grown-ass men, hold hands with other men. <laughs> and walk down the street. Like everything's okay. And they don't just hold hands. 
They're holding fucking pinkies <laughs> and swinging that shit. <laughs> and to them, there's nothing gay about it. Here's the thing. There's nothing gay to them. To them, I'm holding my friend's hand. What's gay about that? <laughs> See, you grew up over here. There is no acceptable time for two straight men to ever touch hands. <laughs> ever. You ever walk to the mall with one of your guy friends and your hand accidentally bumps his like, hey, what the fuck is wrong with him? <laughs> Get off me! <laughs> but in India, grown ass men holding like, and the guys holding pinkies, the best shit about it is they'll still try and mac on chicks. Hey, what's up? Hello, hello. <laughs> hello. How are you looking very lovely today? <laughs> Some guys act like thugs, holding hands. They'll be holding pinkies and eyeballing you. Like they're trying to start some shit. <laughs> I was at the beach in Bombay, right? I'm hanging out. This gang of like 17, sorry, 16. Well, 17 is an odd number. That would mean one guy's like, somebody hold my hand, somebody hold my hand, right? So. <laughs> This, this gang of like 16 dudes is walking across the beach holding pinkies and giving everybody dirty looks. <laughs> With their dress pants and flip flops. <laughs> How are you going to start a fight holding another man's hand? How, how? Let go, let go, let go! <laughs> they bully, man. They bully anybody, man. They bully the wrong people. They bully, uh, for as woke as, and, and all that shit as everyone else is. They, they bully the trans swimmer, Leah Thomas. Yeah, yeah, you guys, there's a trans swimmer in University of Pennsylvania. And, and she was a, when she, she switched, she was a man, a man, and then she became a woman. And she, but she liked to swim still. <laughs> that was her only crime. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for everybody so fucking accepting, she, she became, and not, when she became, a, 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 she, she quit the men's team. So fuck these. Niggas, I'm not fucking with them. <laughs> she joined the women's team, and they went from like last place to like number fucking one. <laughs> and they canceled her, that's crazy. Women were like, no, it's not fair. This bitch brought you to greatness. <laughs> no one even knew the University of Pennsylvania had a pool. <laughs> we knew about their football team. <laughs> That's a pervert, but not a fucking fool. Yeah, that pervert could be there, but you cancel Leah? Fuck you, man. I like Leah, man. Because I respect, I respect, uh, I respect people's, uh, uh, their identity, man. I respect when people go out on a limb and say, hey, this is who I am. I, I know this is going to make you feel uncomfortable. You're not comfortable with it. It's weird to you, but this is, I'm willing to take the repercussion of that. So I'm toxic, but I'm, I'm still open-minded to shit. Like, I get that. I respect that. Like, I love pronouns. Love them. <laughs> They're my favorite thing. <laughs> right? I like that, because especially in, in any woke city, you know, you it's, it, that's what's cool about it. You go into a coffee shop, you don't know this is a, if it's a handsome lady, if it's a if it's uh, do you, but then they, they let you know, they got the name tag, them, they. I'm like, yes, yes, y'all. <laughs> I respect y'all, man. I respect it. I like when a woman puts it in her bio when she goes, she, her. It's, you know, it's bold. It's like, yes, bitch. <laughs> I got my own pronouns. That's how much I love and respect pronouns. Yeah, I like to be called that nigga. <laughs> but 
but nobody wants to say my pronouns out loud in Vancouver, man. So maybe you guys got some work to do. Thank <laughs> you.